it's a pleasure to speak here. All right, so um, so that's the title of my talk. Uh, but there will not be a lot of foliation theory going on in my talk. Uh, what I want to do in these twenty minutes is simply to explain a construction uh, of this um, of a family of foliations that I call higher Ramanujan foliations um, that arise in problems uh, related to um, Hodge theory and number theory. Okay, and at the end I, I will say something about this. Um, the original motivations. Okay, so I want to start. Um, so before introducing um, the higher Ramanujan foliations, I want to start with this um, very classical set of um, algebraic um, differential equations. So I chose uh, three of them here. Uh, and these equations were discovered by, by um, different people at different times, thinking about different problems. Uh, but it turns out they're essentially um, all equivalent. Um, and yeah, I put here um, how to go from one equation to the other. Um, this formula here on the bottom. Um, and I want to focus, so here in blue, I, 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 I put um, the Ramanujan uh, equation. So these are um, differential equations involving Eigenstein series, which are examples of quasi-modular forms, which are functions that appear in number theory. Um, and, and these are the equations I want to focus because um, from the point of view of number theory, they are somehow nicer uh, in some sense. And, but geometrically, they're essentially all the same, okay? So here, the Einstein series, um, um, you can see them either in the variable Q, uh, in the unit disk, or in the variable tau uh, in the upper half plane. And that's how you go from one variable to the other, okay? Now, um, the reason these um, equations uh, were rediscovered many times uh, in the literature is, is essentially because um, they satisfy some, some, some symmetry uh, with respect to the group SL2, okay? So instead of explaining what the symmetry is, um, what I want to do now is um, to, to explain how to see these equations geometrically, to give a first uh, geometric interpretation of these equations, uh, in which the relation with SL2 will be uh, clear, I, I, I hope, okay? So here's a construction. So we start um, with um, SL2 of C, okay? Uh, and we consider the following map to P1 of C, um, expressing P1 as a, a principal homogeneous space, the SL2, okay? And then we will consider the open subset in SL2 of C, uh, which maps to uh, the upper half plane inside P1 of C. So with this choice of map is basically just the A, B, C, D in SL2 of C, such that D is um, invertible and B over D has positive imaginary part. Okay, so it's some, some analytic open subset in SL2 of C. Um, this open subset will be stable under the left action of SL2 of Z, the arithmetic group SL2 of Z. Um, this action is proper and free, and so you can consider the quotient which will be some uh, three-dimensional uh, complex manifold, okay? Now, um, over this manifold, uh, you can consider the following vector field. So we consider um, 0, 1, 0, 0 in the Lie algebra of SL2 of C. Uh, you, can, you can forget this normalization here, it's just some, some constant. Well, you can extend this to a left invariant um, uh, global vector field on, on the Lie group SL2 of C, um, and then restrict to U, and then this um, descends to the quotient. So this descends to X, and this gives a vector field V, a holomorphic vector field on X, okay? All right, um, now here's a theorem that I called uniformization. Um, so XV, so this uh, complex manifold uh, with this vector field is biholomorphic to this open subset of the uh, three-dimensional affine space, okay? Um, and V gets identified with this vector field, which corresponds to Ramanujan's uh, differential equation, okay? So in some sense, you're uniformizing um, this algebraic differential equation 
um, in terms of this uh, Lie group S of T rho of uh, C, okay? And then from this, you can deduce um, a lot of uh, nice uh, symmetries um, that these equations satisfy with respect to S of T rho of C. Okay, and actually here's the proof, um, the one sentence proof. Um, so we have this, uh, we can define a map, an explicit map from this open subset U that lives um, inside um, SO2 of C to uh, the affine space C3. Um, so I define this explicit map in terms of this Einstein series, which are um, these uh, functions that satisfy very good um, uh, transformation properties with respect to the action, to the action of SO2 of Z. Um, so I can just define this explicitly, and if you understand the properties that the Einstein series satisfy, uh, you can check quite easily um, this theorem here. Now, of course, I'm not explaining how I got this formula, um, um, and I won't have time to do that, uh, but once you have the formula, it's, it's easy to verify this um, by, it's just some direct computation. Okay. Um, all right, so now, um, so this is very nice, uh, but from, from, from my point of view, uh, um, it's um, this, this, um, this description here is, is not very good because it's only holomorphic. Uh, from the point of view of algebraic geometry, um, there is a better way of, uh, of seeing uh, what is happening, uh, which is via some moduli problem, okay? Um, so this uh, was, um, at least in the form I'm going to present here, uh, was originally um, uh, done by Movazati. So here's, I have to, uh, let me recall some, some very basic facts. So um, given a complex elliptic curve, so a one dimensional torus, you can consider, you can attach to it, um, the first Dirac homology group, which in this case here would just be a c-dimensional, a two-dimensional c-vector space. Sorry, um, and this uh, vector space comes with uh, two extra structure structures. Um, one of them is a symplectic pairing. Okay, so an alternating uh, non-degenerate pairing um, um, that is essentially just the cut product, and uh, also a distinguished um, subspace. Um, um, given just by holomorphic forms inside your um, the Rank homology. Okay. Um, all right, and then you can you can make the following definition, uh, just to simplify. Uh, um, so a symplectic Hodge basis uh, will be simply a basis of this two-dimensional vector space, which is both compatible with um, the Hodge structure. So this is um, the Hodge filtration on this the Rank homology. Um, and the symplectic structure. So you ask that um, this basis of the form is, is an order uh, pair of the form uh, omega eta, where omega lives in the space of holomorphic forms, and it, uh, omega and eta is a symplectic basis in the sense. Okay, so this is just a definition, but now we can, we can consider the following uh, moduli space. Um, so, Consider the moduli space classifying elliptic curves with a symplectic Hodge basis, so pairs like this. Okay, then uh, it turns out that X, um, this X we define using SL2 of C, um, will be biholomorphic um, to this moduli space, and the vector field V gets identified uh, with um, the unique vector field on this moduli space satisfying uh, these equations here, where NABLA denotes the Gaussman in connection. So let me explain this. Um, so what is happening here um, is that, so over this moduli space, uh, well, points of this moduli space are given by elliptic curves with some extra structure, okay? And then over each uh, point of the moduli space, you can consider um, this uh, vector space, the Durand cohomology. Um, and then this vector space is glued together into some uh, rank two vector bundle over this moduli space, okay? And then uh, because this moduli space also classifies um, 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 the basis of this vector space, 
uh, it comes also with um, a canonical uh, trivialization, this vector bundle, which is given by these uh, sections omega unique and eta unique, so unique for universal, okay? So these are things that come from, uh, for free in this vector space, uh, uh, in this modular space, sorry. Um, and well, these um, vector bundles that you get from cohomology, they all come with something called the Gelsman in connection, which I will explain in the next slide. And, and, and I'm claiming here that um, um, this vector field V uh, gets identified with the unique vector field satisfying these equations, okay? So what is this Gelsman in connection if, you, if you've never seen it? Um, something very simple, it simply tells you how to differentiate under the sign of uh, integral. Okay, so alpha here will be some section of this vector bundle whose, um, which, um, whose fibers are given by the rank homology, so it represents some, some differential form. Um, and gamma will be a um, locally constant family of um, topological cycles over which you can integrate. And then the Gauss-Manin connection is simply the operation that is doing that for you. So if you want to differentiate this um, period here, um, it's the same thing as to compute the period of the uh, connection applied to uh, the differential form alpha, okay? Um, so again, here's um, a very uh, simple proof of this uh, theorem as I stated. Um, so here you consider the class of of uh, analytic curve with a symplectic Hodge basis, and you can associate to it uh, this uh, period matrix here. So omega and eta are the symplectic Hodge basis, um, and then you just choose some basis in, in, in the singular homology, and then you can form this two by two matrix. Um, if you quotient by SO2 of Z, if you consider the image of that um, in this quotient, this doesn't depend on this choice. So this is well defined, and then and then you just you just verify that um, this uh, this does what you want, okay? And then you, you can see here, um, uh, it's not very hard from from this formula satisfied by the Gauss-Mannin connection to see um, that V will be precisely the vector field satisfying um, the equations in um, this statement here. Uh, this statement here, okay? But now this, um, this moduli um, theoretic viewpoint is, um, is much better uh, from the point of view of algebraic geometry and especially of arithmetic geometry, which is uh, what, I, what I'm originally interested at. Um, so let me just uh, say as a remark um, that the identification of this um, moduli space, now just the moduli space of elliptic curves with symplectic Hodge basis, so you can identify this uh, with this um, open subset in the affine um, uh, space. Um, in the way I stated in the theorem, this is just um, um, analytic, but this actually, this identification, if you go directly from the modular space to the defined space, uh, is actually purely algebraic. Uh, and if you um, pay attention uh, to uh, your formulas, uh, you'll see that it works over Q or even over uh, this ring here, where you just need to invert um, two and three. Okay, so I'm just saying that um, there is some 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 arithmetic uh, properties going on here also, uh, but that I will not discuss in, in this talk. Okay. All right. Um, now, so this um, this indicates uh, what should be uh, a good generalization of of these equations. Of this, um, um, yeah, of these equations. So here, uh, what I'm going to consider. So elliptic curves now will become um, abelian varieties. Okay, so higher dimensional tori, uh, which are algebraic, if you like. Okay, so A will be a principally polarized abelian variety of dimension G. Uh, so principally polarized, which is encoded in this lambda here. Um, Formally, is is an isomorphism from the abelian variety to its dual, but if you 
if you want, you can just think this is some some very good uh, projected embedding of your um, abelian variety. Okay, this polarization. And so this polarization, this principle polarization, allows you um, um, induces. So sorry. So this abelian variety, um, you can consider. Um, the Durham cohomology again. Now it will be a 2G dimensional vector space, just as before. So here I'm omitting the base field. Um, it's because it could be any base field actually. Okay. There's also a notion of algebraic Durham cohomology, uh, and could be any base field. But we can keep thinking about uh, C. Um, and then this Durham cohomology comes equipped with also a symplectic pairing, which is induced by this principal polarization. And uh, a Lagrangian sub, uh, subspace, okay, which will be given by holomorphic forms. Okay, so it's uh, in particular it's uh, g-dimensional. So it's very similar to the case of elliptic curves, and then it doesn't take much to uh, to consider um, an analogous definition. So a symplectic Hodge basis of um, this Durham cohomology will be uh, some basis of this vector space uh, that comes in two parts. And so you're going to ask that the first part will be a basis of um, this uh, distinguished subspace here, uh, which gives the Hodge filtration. Um, and you also ask um, this basis to be symplectic, okay, with respect to this uh, symplectic uh, form. Okay, so, so here's a theorem. Um, well, we can also consider um, the moduli problem, um, the analogous moduli problem. So moduli problem of principally polarized abelian varieties of dimension G. So the case we had before is just when G is equal to one. Um, with equipped with a symplectic Hodge basis. So this modular problem uh, is representable by a smooth quasi-affine variety. So quasi-affine just means um, it's an open um, of an affine variety. Uh, but I denote BG and B just for basis, okay, um, of dimension 2G squared plus G. So if you, if you set uh, G equals 1 here, you get uh, 3 which is uh, what we had before for elliptic curves, okay? Um, and again, there, there are also some, some other um, um, more precise uh, statements here uh, in which you can um, do this um, depending on the context, even over Z, if you allow to work uh, with um, moduli stacks, okay? Um, all right, so we have um, this very nice modular space, which is smooth and, and quasi-affine. So you can see this inside some affine space. Um, and well, this actually also comes equipped with um, a natural foliation, and these are the higher managing foliations. So actually, um, I can be I could be more precise here that um, this foliation will be given by vector fields, um, uh, which are also canonically uh, defined on this uh, variety. But here to simplify, I'm just, I'm just considering the foliation. So this foliation uh, will be a rank um, G, G plus one over two foliation. Okay, so if you set G equals one, you get um, one. Okay, just one vector field. Um, which will be given by an algebraic sub-bundle sub of the tangent uh, bundle, uh, consisting of the vector fields, the algebraic vector fields, um, satisfying these equations. And you can see this is exactly one of the equations I, I, I wrote down for uh, the case of elliptic curves. Okay, so a way of seeing that uh, maybe uh, what this foliation represents um, um, you're essentially considering uh, families of uh, abelian varieties uh, with the symplectic Hodge basis, uh, and you're asking that this basis actually doesn't vary along this family, okay? And this will give um, the leaves of the foliation. Um, so 
this is um, the definition. Now, um, you see, in the case of the Ramanujan um, equations, um, they actually come with this very special uh, set of solutions of the equations, which are given by this uh, Eisenstein series, E2, E4, E6. Um, and so here, these higher Ramanujan uh, foliations also have um, some special um, um, tangent um, 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 sub-variety or, or analytic leaf, um, which I denote by phi g, which, so this um, Eisenstein series are defined on the Poincaré upper half plane. Um, this phi g will be defined on the Zigo upper half space, or which is um, some natural generalization of the um, upper half plane. Um, so you can see this as, as a map from the Zigo upper half space to your um, to BG, this modular space, and and the coordinates of that. Um, so if you if you see this inside some affine space, uh, and consider the coordinates of this map, would be um, higher um, higher dimensional analogs of these guys. Uh, so something like a Zigo quasi modular forms. Okay. Um, all right, but now um, now the game is the following. Um, so you have these um, uh, very nice equations, these Ramanujan equations. Um, they have this special set of solutions to satisfy a lot of uh, very nice properties. Um, and you want to know which, which of these properties generalize to this higher dimensional situation. So here, I'm just going to show you a sample of that. Um, so for instance, now here's a, a very classical result um, um, in the theory of modular forms. Uh, which is the fact that this um, E2, E4, and E6, the Einstein series, these functions are algebraically independent as functions, okay? Um, so, which means that um, um, in this geometric picture, if you consider phi 1, phi 1 is precisely um, the curve, the analytic curve given by these coordinates, um, is Zariski dense um, in this um, space here. Well, so here's uh, a theorem so actually, over this um, modular space, every analytic leaf of um, this foliation, this algebraic foliation, is a risk dense. Okay. Um, so in particular, I generalize this. Now um, I'm actually finishing here. Um, let me just explain why why I am looking at this uh, at these kind of things. Um, so, so just just a word about about uh, my original motivations. Um, so here's a theorem in number theory, in transcendental number theory. So I, th this is actually just a consequence of uh, Nesterenko's theorem um, that says the following: um, that these uh, three numbers here are algebraically independent over Q. Okay. So in particular, each one of them is transcendental. It's a transcendental number. Well. Um, the proof of Nesterenko is, is very interesting because um, the idea is simply, you, you see this, um, I mean, I, I'm saying simply, but the proof is very complicated, but um, the basic idea is, is to see these guys as values um, of uh, this Eisenstein series, and then use uh, the good properties of this, that this Eisenstein series satisfy, in particular use um, these differential equations to do um, um, some Diophantine approximation and ultimately uh, uh, prove um, um, this, okay? And so um, a very natural question is, um, is if you can generalize this um, and, and prove um, other statements um, um, in transcendental number theory through a similar approach. So here's um, a conjecture. Um, um, which is very similar in spirit to this one, okay? Um, so three at least of these four numbers should be algebraically independent over Q, okay? Um, so pi, um, e to the pi squared to five, and these uh, special values of the gamma function. Um, so a very natural um, question is, 
well, once you have um, these natural generalizations of um, this Einstein series and this um, and these differential equations, is if you can approach this uh, through this um, um, this higher Ramanujan foliations. Okay, um, so. Uh, so you can actually prove, one thing you can actually prove is that um, if you take G equals two here, uh, you can indeed recover these guys as some special value of this phi two. And then what you're left to do is, is to try to adapt this proof of Nestorenko uh, to this higher dimensional setting. But of course, this is a, a very hard problem um, and it's still open. Uh, but that is sort of um, um, the approach I was I was taking, um, and this is what what um, led me to consider this um, these foliations. Okay. Now to finish, let me just say um, two words. So um, of course I can only scratch the surface here. Um, if you wanna um, see more, um, you can Google these two articles here that I. Um, that I chose here. So this this is um, this is a huge paper. It's over 100 pages um, that has everything that I said here and much more. Uh, it's on the archive. Uh, and also, I should say that there's a big intersection of um, um, this uh, framework with uh, what Mufasati did um, under this this program that he has um, named Gaussman in connection with these guys. So what I chose here um, is, is just to cite uh, one of his most recent articles with collaborators where um, um, he actually, they actually compute um, this higher Ramanujan um, foliation um, or in, in, their, in their terminology, the Gaussman connection of these guys in the case of G equals two. Okay. Um, so I encourage everyone to also have a look at um, his work. Um, yeah, that's all. Thank you. So, uh, one of these examples that you you mentioned in the beginning of uh, health and yes. uh, I've learned about them from the work of Adolfo. Of Gio, yeah. They appear as examples of semi-complete uh, or what uh, univalued. What I don't remember the other name he's using now, but I like semi-complete vector fields. Yes. So, do you know if there are some choices to make this, uh, these examples, this higher Ramanujan foliations, also examples of semi-complete stuff? Yeah, I, I must say I was I was watching um, Adolfo's course and I, I realized I never I never asked myself these questions. Um, it's a good question. I, I don't know actually. Uh, but yeah, so I should have said the, uh, this in the beginning that. Um, Adolfo Guillot has um, some quite extensive work on the dynamics of these equations, um, where you can see um, this uh, thing that I mentioned about the symmetries of these equations and the relation with SL2. Um, and this also uh, fits in this framework of, um, of complete and semi-complete vector fields. But I personally never, never um, thought about this in, in this direction. So I don't know. Okay. Oh, apparently Adolfo is answering. Okay. Yeah, so the answer is yes. <laughs> and also there is a question by Adrian. I, I suppose that's Adrian Langer. Uh, for G equal one, the modulizer are fine. Is it also true for higher G? Uh, for G equals one? Uh, yeah, so um, it's, um, what I can prove is, is uh, wait, well, which moduli? The, the B or, or the moduli of, uh, of just elliptic curves. If it's the B, so what I can prove is that this BG is quasi-affine. So it's an open subset of an affine. Yeah, so um, yeah, it's, um, it's an open subset of an affine. I, I, I don't know if it's, if it's actually affine. It could be, it cannot be affine. Okay, any other question? Well, Adolfo is adding some clarifications to this 
complements to the answer. But why, why aren't you speaking a loop? Yeah. Oh, you're probably doing something else. Yeah, watching the conference in the left turn. <laughs> no, I'm right here. I'm right here. Um, yeah, I think so. So, so the thing was what Tiago says is that this, this, uh, on one hand, for this Ramanujan system, you have the, the solution given by, by Ramanujan's um, modular or quasi modular forms, and then you have this invariant condition, which tells you that if you, uh, you take any element uh, of SL2C, and if it's not in SL2Z, you can use it to transform it somehow yes. to another yeah. solution, and then you can scan all the solutions by doing this. Mm -hmm. So the fact that uh, in the equations Thiago was men mentioning, if you have one solution given by the quasi-modular forms, then you should still have uh, some invariance condition that should enable you to conclude that you can obtain every solution from that yeah. single one and the invariance condition. And that essentially means that your vector field is semi-complete. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I will talk about probably about that on, on the discussion session tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Great. Good idea.